Okay, so the broadcast has just started, and now the countdown will will come. I want to go in live, are you? Here we are, here we are. And action. I, yeah. swear, I can't wait for the day that we actually can afford. <laughs> 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 like well, I can actually, I can do actually that just the day when I, I can actually just push a button and we have the sound effect, yeah? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think all, all, all that is going to come when people start fully supporting that Z podcast, like, you know, really supporting that Z podcast financially because currently the way things are going, I think we need like an airtone number, an MTN number that people can, you know, uh, make right. a few pledges on, make a few contributions Man. to... And things like that, but it's so far, out, it yeah, it is real out here because everything that we're doing right now is coming out of my pocket and yours. Yeah, true. And, and you've got uh, two kids, <laughs> and this is like your third child. Or do you have two kids? Uh three actually. Three. Okay, so this yeah. is your fourth child. Yeah. Oh, that's your three that you know. Three that you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I know of. Because I've heard some you know, old stories about you, Kim. Also, 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 considering your lifestyle, it's amazing you only have one son, eh? I actually find it shocking that you only have one son. What lifestyle is this? Uh, the, the one that you tell us about. The one where you see more ass on a toilet seat. So, yeah. <laughs> that lifestyle. <laughs> Listen, this is just uh, this is all for show. Uh, oh, it is! Um, I live a very, it is for sure. I live a very boring life. You can see it's like uh, it's a uh, it's a Monday evening and I'm you, alone. It's just you, the fridge, the laptop, nothing much happening, yeah. And two cockroaches. <laughs> One rat I saw by the <laughs> bin the other day when I visited your house. Um, dude, I, I, mean, I don't know you've what never your weekend's seen a goddamn been like. Rat in here. Yeah, I, I don't know what your weekend's been like, but mine has been quite uh, quite the eventful weekend, eh? And if I can start by first mentioning something that we did over the weekend, we posted Muzukanji with a bottle of Vox water. What's up with Muzukanji and giving us all these mm, numbers mm, every mm. time? I mean, when you look at our Bruh. when you look at our YouTube, the most views we've ever had are with the Muzukanji episode, and yeah, then the most yeah with Muzukanji, and then the most uh, likes on a post we've ever had. What was Muzukanji over the weekend? I mean, we've, we're Muzukanji. still a relatively, we're still a relatively new page, and to we're get numbers like new, 13, 14,000 is something that's huge for us. Up and Muzukanji gave post. us that. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. You know, if this girl was in the states or in a different country that actually really appreciates who she is, yeah, and um, the brand that she has, ah, fuck, she'll be out of here, man. <laughs> what did you lose? You look you know, Sanga supposed Sanga supposed to call me on my own nine five. Like, what did give you lose? Give, give me a second, dude. Rwanda, you went to Rwanda, and I went to Kit over the weekend, Jesus. and everybody kept asking me Jesus. where Elson was. <laughs> that shit happens to me all the time. Every time someone sees me, they ask where Kalinga is, and I always look in my pocket like, God damn, he was here just a second ago. <laughs> Oh, look at that. He has to what is ask that? his wife for permission. For the other phone. I'm saying, look at this. This nigga has to... Yeah, he has to ask his wife for... Oh, man. Oh, the, the, you I, see, I, this also, this is, this, this is the life that you're missing out on, eh? Where... I, I'm not, I, I I am not that, missing out on shit. No, you are missing... <laughs> you are missing out on a very good life. Where whatever I'm missing or... 
I've lost in the house. I can simply just tell my wife and she knows exactly what it is. You see what I mean? Hi, babe. You see what I mean? There it is. My other phone. Let me, t- let me tell you something. Let me tell you yeah. something. See, the difference with me is with the lifestyle that I have, if anything breaks in this house, I know who the fuck did it because it's me. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't have to, I don't have to have a caucus <laughs> or put everybody in the same room like... Who the fuck broke this shit? <laughs> you have to answer to yourself. So what do you think this is? I answer exactly. Even when you come you, home you late, think, you think this Yeah. You, you look you at the mirror like glasses are free. <laughs> over, over the weekend. Dude, as well, how was Kitwe uh, though? Yeah. Kitwe, you know, I'll, I'll be very honest with you, we didn't get the numbers we expected. But then again, uh, it is to be expected considering the number of days we put into marketing. But a good crowd turned out. And the shocking thing, though, about my weekend and the Rewind Party with three in Ketwe, we had more white people than black people. I'm starting to wonder, who's following us on our socials? And how do we have more white people at my we Rewind have Party? A, you know what I mean? We didn't have a... Uh, we didn't have a poll. We didn't figure that out. Yeah. That would be actually interesting. Wait, so where was the Rewind Party? It was in Kitwe at a, at a venue called Occasions. And, uh, yeah, yeah so, and, and here's the funny thing. The gig it's is like a mini granddaddy, as... right? Sorry? It's like a mini granddaddy's. No, not necessarily. It's more of a wedding venue. It's being used more as a wedding venue in Kitwe. And it's owned by a friend, Beverly. Oh, okay. Really, really, yeah. So... The event was advertised as a throwback event, you know, dressing your 90s or if you can use, do your former screen uniforms and stuff. And, you know, people start coming in. We advertise saying uh, people should show up like a what, 18 hours? People start coming in at like 20, 30, 21. Two, three black people. Then a group, a huge group of white people walks in. And most of them below the age of 20. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? Just showed up. Exactly. Most of them below the age of 20. I know what you're thinking. Are you sweating? Uh, I'm not thinking. I know what you're thinking. But why are you sweating now? And the air conditioning is on. Imagine that. Anyway, so... (laughs) What am I thinking? When I mentioned uh, a lot of the... (laughs) The, the people that came in were below the age of 18. Most of them girls. Oh, not below the age of 18, below the age of 20. Between 18 and 20, 21, 22, somewhere there. They look really young, though. It was quite an interesting event. We had so much fun. Saturday is where I got the Elson irritating, annoying question. Where is Elson? Where is Elson? I, I, was, I was hosting an event, emceeing uh, Beerville in Muflira. Are they pretty? There were a lot of people there, thousands of people there. It was super crowded event. Congratulations to McFarlane for putting up such an, uh, an interesting event. Super crowded event. And I, 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 at some point, I got tired of taking photos of people. But half the time, I was being asked where Elson is. Where's Elson? Where's Elson? At some point, I actually even started checking my pockets. Like, you know what? I, there's no room for Elson in there. So if you don't see him with me, he ain't with me. <laughs> <laughs> How was Rwanda though? I mean, we heard you were in Rwanda over the weekend. I thought it was great, man. Um, I've got a lot of thoughts on Rwanda. Um, it's more of um, you and I have spoken about this. The women are beautiful, yeah. but it's more of a police state. You can tell. You ever you ever gone to a country where you can tell that the people feel like they're being watched? So they're kind of like on their best behavior. That's kind of like the mm-hmm. sense there. Okay. That's uh, sort of yeah. how um, people in the media... But it was great, with... though. Um, okay. There's something you're not telling us. No, no, go ahead. I don't know why there's a lag. Well, it's just the two of us, yeah. There's yeah. sort of a, a small delay. Can you hear? Can you? Can you? Can you? Is it? Is it my side or yours? No, I'm getting that because the second I stop talking, I, I'm, I'm I'm getting like almost five seconds of silence before you respond to me. So I think there is a lot of lag. Yeah. 
I don't know. That's weird. Wait, were you asking me something? Yeah, I was saying there's something you're not telling us about Rwanda, apart from it feeling like a police state. There's, there's, listen, let me tell you something. There's people that ask me, like, why is Elson so soft now? Yeah. Dude, there are people <laughs> that I do not know mm -hmm. watch my podcast. I had, I had my mom tell me about certain episodes. I swear to God. I and your language, God. yeah? I, I had, so I bought my mom a car. And you know how there are these church elders. So they split their reviews into two. How good they thought it was and how I carry myself on the internet. Mm, yeah. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> So I'm just sitting there like, Jesus. So yeah, man, I I don't know if that's a good thing, but I yeah, I got a little concerned that I did not think. Initially, I just thought it was like, yeah, I don't know, three, four, five people that watch it, but now, yeah, it, it now, the whole yeah, I am getting. And why you find the whole fucking village is watching this shit? So I'm like, wait, what's your language, son? What's your language, son? The whole village yeah, is watching. Yeah, and now. this thing, and this thing lives on the internet forever, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, look, look so, at your son trying to find out what daddy was like. <laughs> let me tell you something. 11. Let me tell you something extremely funny <laughs> about my son. And I, I, I yeah. want to share that video if I can find it. So, where's my audio coming from? Okay. So, my my son um, calls my my dad grandpa, and he calls me yes, dad. Yes, he should. Or yeah. firstly, or firstly, two things. He he doesn't recognize the word father. Because when <clears throat> when he's asked, who is your father? He says, I don't have a father. But if you ask him who's your dad, he points to me. Yeah. Which is weird. Right? And so 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 he was asked, so who's your father? He says, I've got no father. Okay, so who's your dad? Then he points to me. Then he was asked, uh, and who is he? And they pointed to my dad and they said, that's grandpa. And then they said, and who is his father? Meaning who is my father? Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't know. Then he then says, okay, does your dad, does your dad have a dad? Then he said, no. <laughs> you need to see you need to see his face when he was told that your grandfather is your dad's dad is your dad's dad it was like I, <laughs> wait hold on let me look for you i'm like hell no you are lying that's impossible that's my grandfather my dad doesn't have a dad he I can't have, fathom this info right God. now no he couldn't no he couldn't hold on let me look for it you know, sp speaking of grandpas, and uh, I don't know if you can hear this. Yeah. Put it, put it closer to the mic, though. I swear to God, I I I I fell to the floor. I, I was saying, um, speaking of that, you know, I was I was quite baffled with uh, some information that I just recently got. Eh? So, oh, an FBI? No. Um, remember this whole Joel Osteen thing that you sparked, and everybody's talking about <laughs> nowadays. And everywhere I go, I actually got a lot of this. I actually got all this, a lot of this even in Moflera. People are talking about, yeah, you actually do look like Joel Osteen, even in person. And I just recently found out, and my wife actually had this information before I did. And I've been in my family my whole life. My wife has only known these people for like a few years, and she knows more about my family than I do. So I just recently discovered... That you're related? Are you ready for this? Huh? Just recently discovered that great-grandma was a bit of a naughty girl, eh? 
just found I out. I don't like where this story is going. You, dude, I didn't like where this story was going. My jaw floored when I had this, heard this information. So great-grandpa was a white man from Egypt. No way. Ah, uh, so some Egyptians showed up in Zambia, I think like early 1900s, uh, late 1800s, and Grandpa fell in <laughs> look at that jaw on the screen. Yeah, so great grandma fell in love with one of these white guys, and I think he promised to take her back to Egypt or Europe or wherever they came from. But he left her pregnant, and well, here we are today. I could explain why my nose looks like Joel Osteen's, man, like on the real. Dude, everything about you looks like Joel Austin. Your nose, your smile, how narrow your face is. Everything about this. Oh, my God. Do you know if, if you are to grow your hair, or you, you, your, your hair is nappy, right? Yeah. But if, if, you, are, but but, if you are to grow But I'm grow, growing it. I, I am growing it, yeah. No, but you cut it. There was a point where you are actually growing it. You actually cut yeah. it. But Jesus, that the resemblance is so uncanny. <laughs> so grandma, great grandma, um, I'm, uh, it, it explains why my mom and her sisters and their cousins are a little lighter than us who came after them. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was only recently that I found out that great grandpa was actually a white man from Egypt. So here we are today. There's some white blood somewhere in me. Legendary great grandma decided to jump out of her gene pool. Did you just change my name to Kale Steen? <laughs> Silly ass. <laughs> <laughs> ah, crap. Dude, you have got no idea how much money we're sitting on here. <laughs> how? Bruh, can you fucking just claim your family already? How are we going to make any money for looking like Joel Osteen, like a black Osteen? Yeah, I don't know. Just claim to be separated at, at, at birth. And he, I don't know, because this guy is like worried about his reputation. So come up with some bullshit that he <laughs> he moved you to Africa and you know, all this bullshit. <laughs> You're full of shit. Dude, uh, other things that happened over the weekend. Oof, I think this makes... Every Zambian mighty proud, super proud. We Marvel Studios released the official. I see where this is for, going. Yeah, Marvel Studios are officially uh, released a trailer. What Monday for uh, mm -hmm. Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, the second installment of Black mm. Panther, and the whole minute and a half is "Never Forget" by Sampa the Great. Do you know how proud that makes us feel right now? Like yo. Yo, dude, I don't. I wonder if if we if we show the trailer, would we be yeah. flagged for copyright infringement? Um, I don't think so because a lot of people have actually posted it. Eh? Do you want to do that though? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of tempted to because I'm but really you know fucking first, psyched. You know the first thought that comes to my mind when I see such things or when I saw the trailer for. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It took mm -hmm. me back to Chef 187. And when he went to, was it Nigeria, the Coke studio, and he was singing the local language, and uh, Zambians attacked him over that. Like, you know, you went abroad and you couldn't sing in English and things like that. And, he, on, and on his uh, previous album, he spoke about how he was going to win or wanted to win or will probably one day win a Grammy using. Bemba, our local language. The, of course. I don't, I don't and now the possibility is like, it's there, it's this close, you know what I mean? We yeah. are almost there. Because I mean, we, we spoke last week about how uh, the Grammy, the Grammy, uh, what, what, what's, the, what's the, which organization runs the Grammys again? Um, The Grammys, hold on, hold on. anyway, whatever. The Grammys posted a tweet, tweeted something uh, two, three weeks ago, just basically recognizing the efforts that some of the greatest putting into her works and things like that. I strongly feel oh, yeah, I saw that they're running for a Grammy. And it could be for this song, Never Forget. Now, if she wins the Grammy with Academy. that song, it turns Chef 187 into a prophet. Because he did say Absolutely. that one day is going to win a Grammy 
using our local language and that just might be happening very soon you know what absolutely. i mean absolutely yeah. absolutely hold on let me see let me see if i can let me see if i can share this hold on yeah hold up hold up hold up hold up um the fuck we not to... in Shibemba. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. Okay. Can you can you hear it? Can I hear what? I'm saying wait, hold on. We will never forget. Hey. There we go. His people did not call him General or King. They called him Kukul Khan, the Feather Serpent God, killing him will risk eternal war. He's coming. For the surface world. They lost the protector. Ah, that's the, the way my skin crawled when I saw the trailer. She posted it. I, I went and checked it out on YouTube. Dude, I've, I've never been prouder to be Zambian than now. You know what I mean? Like, well, that, this is like the... And, and you see, the, 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 the thing that made me proudest to be, Afri to be Zambian first was the mm -hmm, Africa mm -hmm, Cup 2012. Mm -hmm. And 10 years later, we now have some of the great doing big things in Hollywood, man. Like, what the hell? Amazing, bro. Um, you know, I I I attended um, uh, Emax unveiling of um, iPhone fourteen, yeah, I, the iPhone fourteen, and um, I don't know why people do this to me, but I I was made to sit next to um, um another Sampa that's not as great, uh, Miles Sampa, <laughs> and um, yeah. We started talking about Sampa the Great, and it was like I've never heard any song by her, uh, which is which is a lot of the um, rhetoric that I hear when people speak about Sampa the Great. Uh, can you tell me one song by her, and why is it when we're going to clubs we do not hear this girl? But evidently, she is putting Zambia on the map. Yeah. So I'm extremely proud of what she's been able to achieve, um, and. Me personally, um, I've got I've got personal stake in this. Um, given how short she is, um, <laughs> I don't know why you like this so much. Yeah, <laughs> it, it must I've feel really good meeting this, bro. It must feel really good meeting people who are shorter than you, eh? I was actually shocked at how Roberto is. <laughs> Emac. Sampa, yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm in good company. Ah, <laughs> oh, but this, but, but this you, is you, incredible. You, you, I wonder what. The, I wonder you what. Literally the, walk two amongst those names you mentioned. I, I, I observe that whenever you're with them. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder what that check looks like. Okay, so we got Trevor. Tell us who Trevor is, though, before he joins. Trevor Mumba is a businessman who, uh, he, the, 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 he's going to share this, I'm sure. Hardships when growing up, goes to South Africa, becomes this millionaire guy. And his mission in life what, is to Like inspire, quite, a, quite a millionaire or dollar millionaire? That's like important. a dollar, dollar millionaire. And he goes to South Africa and through the years, and this, we're talking at a space of about eight, nine years, because he went to South Africa, like what, 2014? And the guy has made a fortune for himself through his marketing company, Rovert, which is just the name Trevor spelt backwards. So that's the man we'll be talking to in a few seconds. And uh, <laughs> he, he, get it, yeah? 
he yeah he he clearly did not have autocorrect when he was coming up with that name. <laughs> See, school is important. <laughs> <laughs> Robert! Yo! Trevor! How are you guys? Very well. How's, How's it going, bro? my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. I, I, I was just doing your intro there, and I'm telling people he's a millionaire living in South Africa, and the first question that pops up is, is that millionaire in Kwacha or millionaire in dollars? I said, does it matter, really? Yeah, I maybe. Yeah. That. He doesn't like talking about money, clearly. No, no I do. Why, why do you think I work so hard? You know? <laughs> well, to, well, to, well, to have it and, and not talk about it. Because one thing that yeah. I've realized about people... With, one thing I've realized about people with money is... People with real money, they do not want you to know they've got money. Mm. Is that you true, Trevor? Me? Yeah, look, there's a, there's a point where the, the excitement dies off. So it's not like you, you don't want to talk about the money, but the excitement dies off and you get to a, to a different level where you start to chase other things. You know, so I think that's just what I've noticed. You know, there's a point where it, it just dies off and your focus just changes. You, you grow into other things. And when you talk about money, the numbers change, um, the game changes. It actually just becomes a game at some point, you know. You know, speaking of the money comes in and you start thinking of other things, we've watched, you know, how you've, well, not the whole movie, though. And I'm talking about the movie yeah. entitled Trevor Mumba. We've yeah. sort of watched how, you know, you've diversified from just robot marketing, these robot logistics. Um, and, you know, a lot of young cats starting out in business will see that and will follow the advice that many motivation speakers would give them in terms of diversification. Mm. People will tell you have six, seven streams of income in order for you to, you know, become a millionaire one day, to be comfortable in life. Just run us through. I think we need this advice from somebody who's actually doing it and succeeding at it. Run us through diversification, man. Like, at what point should a business person diversify? And how, how did you get to where you are, man? Um, yeah, look, that's, uh, that's a question that I get a lot. Um, and... Uh, I'm just trying to think where to start just so it makes sense. So yeah. when, when, when you were introducing me before I came on, I think to everybody, um, you talked about how I've been in South Africa for like eight, nine years. Uh, it's actually been longer. Ah. And it, it's, it's important for me to say this just so that as I begin to explain my business journey, it can make sense to a lot of people. Because part of the reason why um, so many people get hurt in business is they want to do things too quickly, you know? It takes time. It takes a lot of time. I first moved to South Africa in 2007. So in, in total, you're looking at about 15 years. Um, Robert is clocking 13 years on the 26th of March next year. So it's been that long. Wow. Okay. How old are you, yeah. if you don't mind me asking? I'm 39. He's still a young guy. You make me feel, yeah, make yeah. Me feel like I'm not doing shit with my life, man. Um, I'm, I'm 39. Um, I'm grateful. I don't feel old. I don't feel young. Um, I just feel grateful. Um, if I were to go tonight, to die, that is, tonight, looking at where I started off and where I am right now, I, I would go a happy guy, man. I've done some cool shit. And I'm grateful. You know, so to get into the question now, since you've known how long I've been at this game for, mm -hmm. um, the first goal for me, I, I, I always wanted to do big things. I always wanted to run businesses. But to be honest with you, when I was leaving Zambia, the goal was to just get 
as far away as possible from poverty. Okay, it was just that clear. Whatever, whatever I was going to do, I just wanted to stay away from poverty, man. Poverty sucks. And any person that, um, that makes poverty look like it's some cool thing that we all need, they actually don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Poverty is not good for anybody. And we should all try our best to elevate ourselves out of that. And when we get out of that, the goal is to elevate others, which sort of answers uh, what Elson was, was saying and what I was talking about earlier. When you get to a certain point, it's not even about just the money anymore. It's like the goal changes. You evolve. I'm at that stage now where the goal is to try and elevate as many people as possible out of the the poverty that they are in, the, the difficult situations that they are in, to just try and give the next person some hope. So that was my first goal, personally, to just get away from poverty. So I moved to South Africa. Um, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know where, where I was going to start off, what I was going to do. Uh, ended up staying with a complete stranger, a guy called Andrew. Um, you know, I shared a room with him, you know. Um, and straight away, I just started looking for a job. Uh, by the way, I don't have any college diplomas. I don't oh, have... Oh, Jesus. Kalenga is going to like this. <clears throat> yeah. Because he I don't have college. Oh, yeah? Now nah, he, he knows my story. So I've never stepped a day in college after grade 12. I failed my grade 12. I only passed English. Um I got 98% in English, and I've always just thought, man, that's interesting. It's like, that's all I, I, I really needed, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because, dog, I can speak some very good English, you know? Sometimes you listen to the way I construct my syntaxes, and you think, man, this guy has got all these degrees. We've I just read tweets. a lot. We've seen your tweets, yeah. we know. Yeah, and sometimes I just like to put some F words in there just to remind people that there's still a little gangster inside me. I do that very deliberately. And just to show people that the idea of perfection is a lie. You want to be a happy person, just live your fucking life. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's, that's me. So I was, I was very aware of the situation that I was in, the fact that I don't have any um, school qualifications. So when I was looking for a job in South Africa, when I just got here, I was, I was open to anything, really. Um, I remember going to a KFC, um, just like 2Ks uh, from where I was staying, uh, looking for a job there. And they, they, they turned me down. Um, I remember trying to get a job at um, Walton's, you know, the stationary place, um, and they, they asked me to attend some interviews somewhere, and I got lost and never made it to the interviews, you know? Um, so, again, I just kept looking for jobs, and I saw this one ad for, for a sales job, um, and it said um, opportunity for advancement. I think that's what really caught my attention. I wanted to see what that advancement was all about. The mm. job was very hard. I had to sell things door to door. Uh, toys and different things. And then we moved up to selling phone contracts for a company called Neotel. We we're selling these converged um, telephones. So it's like a landline, but a wireless one that's got internet built in it as well. Um, Neotel would later on get bought by Liquid, the guys that you know as Liquid Telecoms now. Yeah. Um, you know, and after that, I just... Neutral, Neutral is owned by Strive Masiwa, right? Uh, Liquid is owned by Strive Masiwa. Neutral was owned by Tata, Tata Group. Really? Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah. So Neutral was owned by Tata Group, and then when they sold it, that's when they sold it to Strive Masiwa, who owns Liquid. So that's, it, it, it just became part of Liquid, or what you know now as, as Liquid. So I did sales... Um, for those guys, for the company I worked for, had a contract to do sales for those guys. Um, and I, I just started working on, on opening my own company, you know. Um, I didn't like the way the sales company I worked for treated people. They taught me a lot, I won't lie, you know. There were so many great lessons. 
Um, I really built up my confidence in sales, in myself. They taught me how to dream, but the money was bad. The treatment was bad. And I just knew I could do better. I could treat people better. I could pay people better. Uh, so I started working on my papers because this whole time I was just an illegal immigrant in South Africa. So the first thing I needed to do was to fix my papers, which I did. Um, and by 2010, I had at least a permit that allowed me to register what you call SCC. That's a closed corporation. So this is not a big company like what I have now, um, which is a private limited company. A closed corporation was a company, but it had its own restrictions. But at least I was allowed to, to register that. So that's how I registered Robert Marketing CC. The first deal that I had was with um, Virgin Mobile. Um, there were a pig, big piggy banking their network of um, Telcom, Vodacom. They were, they were pretty smart. So they figured... Mm -hmm. The, the quickest way to, to grow as a network is to not put up your own towers because it's costly. So what if you could just piggyback rent? Right off some yeah. infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what they did. So we sort of just grew very quickly with that campaign um, and they needed somebody to do sales for Sorry them in Cape Town. You. Sorry to cut you off. So the company that you registered, what was that? Was that marketing or was that technology? What, was, what was the company? That's Rovet Marketing. Okay, got it. Yeah, Robert Marketing. All I could do was sell. Um, and to me, it didn't really matter what I was going to sell. I just wanted to sell for somebody. Um, so coincidentally, my first deal was just with Virgin, who were also in telecoms. And I was coming from a telecoms background with my previous mm -hmm. company. So that, so that became easy. So I set up shop um, at, I think that was 40 Ribic Street, corner of Ribic and Look Street in uh, Cape Town. Um, and, and that's it. We started. The deal was very simple, really. I was making like 50 rand per sale um, for Virgin Mobile. Okay. So it, it wasn't a lot of money, but it made sense because Virgin's goal was to just grow their subscriber base. So what we were selling were SIM cards. But if you sell a SIM card, it costs nothing anyway. So the deal yeah. was when we sell a SIM card, we preload 50 rand airtime on it. So it's the same 50 rand airtime that we're preloading on the SIM cards that Virgin would pay me back. And for me, when I hired my sales guys, the deal was simple. You sell a SIM card, you preload it with 50 rand airtime, I give you 50% and I keep 50%. But I had like uh, a bunch of youngsters, you know, like 18 year olds, 20 year olds, 25 at, 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 at most, mm -hmm. doing an average of 10 sales each a day. So they would make themselves like a 250 rand a day, but I've got like 30 of them. I've wow. got like 30 of them. So I'm making like 250 rand from each sales guy per day, and I've got 30 of them. So I'm in a day, I'm making, yeah, I'm making like <laughs> 7,500 7, bucks a day. And I was you're, working you're good money. With numbers, eh? that's, that's what I do. I don't even know why I failed at school, bro. <laughs> Actually, you're very, you're very correct. Yeah, 7,500 rand. I, I was making that money, bro. So there's no way I can forget what I was making. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah. I grew, I was, I was killing it. So that's 20, 2010 uh, when I started my company, right? Within the same year, um, and you know, this, these numbers were just averages, right? At some point, I grew my team to like 60 guys, you know, just doing that, just selling SIM cards, nothing else. I was making money so fast um, before the same end of year, 2010, I banked my first million rand. Wow. And I was like, hell yeah. You know, I, I felt like... I, You're the shit when and I the urine. That, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, you know that 50 cent scene in Get Rich or Die Trying? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what I did? The first thing I did, right, was to buy a CLK Mercedes <laughs> off, off the showroom floor. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so now I felt like 50 cent for real, you know? Um, but I still had a lot of lessons to learn. Um, look, I, w I, was, I was fresh at making real money. So there's, there were so many things that I still had to learn. Uh, so I, I was blowing through that money real quick, man. I was living like Rick Ross, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, uh, but it's all good. I don't, I don't regret any of it. I had lessons to learn. So that was at 27. I banked my first million rand and I was still making good money. Uh, by 30, I was broke. <laughs> you know, I, I, really, I really knew how to spend my money. By 30, I was broke and, um, you know, life just became hard. Um, by 31, I was completely out, you know. Um, I, I actually closed my business down for two years. Two? That's how serious it was. For two years, from the age of 30 to, um, so let's say from about 29, when I was 29 years old to about 31, okay, Rovet was closed. There was no wow. Rovet. That's how bad things got. Um, you know, there's this beautiful girl I was dating. I really loved her. Everybody that knew us just thought this is the girl I was going to grow old with and get married to. Uh, life just became hard. We had to split up. Um, I couldn't afford to live in my luxury apartment anymore. I gave that up, went to rent a room in someone's house. Um, then, um, so that was at 31, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, things were just happening so fast. And just when I thought things couldn't get worse, my grandmother died in Zambia, man. And this is the woman that raised me. Um, I get emotional every time I get to this part of my story, man. It still breaks me. My grandmother died and I was, I was broke. I couldn't attend her funeral. You know, that's, uh, that's how bad it was, you know. Um, and then afterwards, I just hit depression. It just fucked me up. I just got depressed. And funny enough, I never stopped hustling, right? I never stopped pushing. So... Just before my grandmother died, my grandmother died on the 28th of August in 2014. Yeah. On the 21st of August, I signed my first deal with an NGO uh, called Four Paws South Africa. They are part of Four Paws International. They are in 12 different countries, including the UK, Austria, Australia, Germany, so I signed that deal with them on the 21st of August and there's like this, you know, like breeze that I'm feeling in my life. I'm like, things are getting back on track. Then exactly a week later, my grandmother dies and that just fucks me up. But I've got an obligation to this organization that I just signed a contract with. So now I have to rebuild my business through depression. So I'll be out there during the day, hustling hard, working hard, and I'll be up at night crying and fighting with my own demons and talking to myself. But somehow I think just being aware of how I, I had ended up there, you know, helped me heal. Um, it's like what Jay-Z says, you know, you can't heal what you never reveal. Man, that's, yep, that's, that's true. true. And I saw it for myself. And that revealing has to happen to yourself first. I was very aware of how I ended up there. I was very mm. aware of, of what I needed to do. And I was willing to do it. I held myself accountable. But most importantly, I forgave myself for the mistakes that I made. Then I hit savage mode. There is very little I gave a fuck about in that moment when I realized... Yeah. Look, the, I think the one thing that scared me the most, right, was losing my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So after I lost my grandmother and I mourned her and I, I, I dealt with it, I didn't give a fuck, really. You had nothing else to lose. I had nothing else to lose. I just went hard. 
guys, I worked so hard from 2014 when I was 31 to 2016 when I was 33. My business grew so quick. I moved back from Cape Town into Jersey because um, I needed to be somewhere more central because that's what my clients demanded, you know? So being in Johannesburg meant I could service the whole country better from there. I could go uh, KZN, I could do Eastern Cape, I could do Cape Town, I could do the North, which is Limpopo, you know? Um, then one, one day, you know, tax season, I get an email from my accountants and I'm looking at this tax bill and I'm wondering why it's so fucking high. Mm. <laughs> so I, I, I send an email to my accountant. I'm like, could you please call me? So this white boy calls me back. It's like, what's up? I'm like, why the fuck am I paying so much money in taxes? He says, but you are supposed to. I'm like, I know, but not this much. So he runs me through the numbers. Then I realize one thing my tax bracket had changed. I was worth a million dollars at 33, two years wow. from wow. depression. Yeah. And that, that just changed. That just changed the game. Now mm. you, <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. I made it. Yeah, I wanted to say that. And then I got sad again. In that moment, I was sad again. Do you know why? There was nobody to share that with. Yeah, like, I didn't have a mother. I didn't have my grandmother. You know? So guess what I did? I went back to work. That's all I know. Beast mode. That's, that's all I know. That's all I do. You can fault me on so many things, but boy, hustle is not one of those things. And this is where I like to talk shit. I'm the hardest motherfucker that I know. I'm actually the hardest working motherfucker that I know. And my whole life proves it, you know. Now, uh, diversification, right? Yeah. I always knew I wanted to diversify, but I wasn't in a rush because I knew one thing. From the first time I made a mistake of losing money, I learned so many lessons and I knew that the next time I make money, I'm going to be very smart about it. So the whole time when I was rebuilding my business, I knew all the things I wanted to do. For example, my radio station is not a new idea at all. It just happened at the right time. Mm -hmm. You get it? My, my clothing brand, Kilogram, is not a new idea at all. In fact, I first wanted to open Kilogram in 2010 itself. I'm still waiting for my hoodie, bro. It's coming. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So when I built my, my, my business back up, the first thing that I did was to start building the right team. I knew that in order to pull off all the things I wanted to do down the line, I needed, I was going to need the right people. So without even them knowing, right, I started hiring people for the future. So I would look at this guy's traits and what his strengths are and what he's good at. And I was like, I, I like this guy. I could work with them. And I like this lady. I could work with them. And I built such a solid team. I taught them everything that I knew, everything that I thought they needed to know. I prepped these guys hard. I took care of them, built very good relationships with them. And I just started using my own money, which, is, which works to my advantage. Because so many times, right, when people have to diversify their businesses, they have to look outward for financing. Now, you could get that money, right? But the risk of owing someone else money to build a business that you're not sure of, you know, can be a bit 
crazy. But if I'm using my own money, fuck it, man. If I lose it, it's my fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, true. But then, yeah, it's, it's my fucking money. So everything that I've built to date, guys, I can proudly say I've built with my own money. I haven't gotten financing from a bank. There is no um, equity partners in any of my business. I don't have any venture capitalists in my business. Trevor owns his shit 100 fucking percent. And this is why Word. I wrote the way that I fucking wrote. And that's power. <laughs> Dude, you know, your life, uh, when people are looking at your life right now, it seems so glamorous. And I almost cried the first time we, we sat down to chat. We, uh, we met in Kit about four or five years ago. And yeah. when, we, when you shared your story, your childhood, losing parents early in life, the struggles with cruel aunts, cruel cousins, cruel relatives and the likes, Nobody can share that story better than you. I think it'd be nice for people to know where your hunger comes from and why you turned out to be the hustler that you are today. Because, I mean, a lot of, people, a lot of times people look at you today, you know, by driving your Jeep, your black Mercedes Benz, you call the black... Is it Black Bishop? Black Pope? There's two of them. There's the Black Pope and the Black Knight. The Black Pope is the COK. So this is... Yeah. This is the, the Black Pope is actually my favorite car, right? So I, I told know, you the first, the first car I bought when I made my first million rand was a Mercedes. Yeah. It was that, okay. but it was silver. But it was silver. Yeah, it was silver. So even when I lost everything, right, I just refused to lose that car. I, it, that car was there for me. There was a time, guys, when I dropped that car for so long without servicing it because I had no money. And I remember being far away from home one time in Cape Town, you know, um, and it just refused to switch on. And I remember just sitting in the car and talking to the car saying, I know, I know things are hard. I know you need a service. <laughs> I, I just yeah. don't have money right now. Please just carry me for a few more months. And that's after I just lost my grandmother and I had that deal cooking with four paws. And funny enough, I was like, let me try one more time. And the car just switched on and I was shit scared. You know, like... <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> and I made, yeah, like, I made a promise to my car that day that I will not get rid of you. As soon as I can, I will take care of you. So when the money started rolling in again, uh, I bought myself uh, a Lexus IS200. And guess what I did? I packed my COK for like three years. I never drove it. And then the next yeah. time I drove it, I had put in like another 150K just redoing it. I repented it, changed the rims, ordered the whole front grill, front, you know, from, from the US and just gave it a facelift. And that's, that's the black car that you see now. Then there's uh, the S-Class, um, the S-Class AMG, uh, then all these other things. But yeah, like what you are saying, Kay, it hasn't been easy. I lost my mom when I was when I was eight, and I lost my dad when I was nine. One hours. Yeah. So I had to. Was that you talking no. or something? Else? No. Just, and Nelson keeps shouting no, at you. No, it's that. his laptop. My, like his laptop, laptop dictates what time it is to him. Like. Like he's five years old or like he's blind. Like every single yeah, time. Yeah, the laptop, the the laptop is behaving like a wife, eh? Like, and you know what happened? Exactly. Do you... <laughs> I, need, I need to share this story. <laughs> I need to share this story about this laptop and how embarrassing it was, man. There was an event two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. The official opening of some building. And there's all these dignitaries from Nigeria, uh, Zambia dignitaries. I think there was, there was a minister or two. The min I think minister of tourism or something. And the event started very late, yeah? So Ooh. as the minister is giving a speech, the laptop tells us the time. And you know how bad it made him look like we're reminding him what time it is and he should hurry up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like, like homie. Yeah, exactly. And everyone looks back at me and I was DJing the event. Everybody looks back at me like, dude, really? <laughs> like, it's not me. It's not me. It's this guy. Trevor, uh, I, I was trying to take you back to your mom dying, your dad dying. And... There's that story about you start trying to start a business as a young boy, you know, selling ice blocks to cool people off. 
and you I, I can't remember if it's your aunt yeah so yeah yeah yeah. so my my mom dies my dad dies i go and live with my granny uh my grand my poor grandmother in matero and then uh at some point an auntie of mine this is my mom's young sister okay um volunteers to take care of me for for a short while um so i'm just there doing my thing and now i'm like in in secondary school, so we're talking about grade ten, you know, out at Lotus, at Lotus Basic School, and I live in Lilanda, you know, and I have to go to school uh, at Lotus, you know, where Lotus is in Madras, on the other side of Kamwala, there, you know. So this is how I have to pay for my transport to school. I, I make ice blocks, and you know, my aunt has got two two fridges in the house, an upright uh, fridge and then a deep freezer. So I get to use the, the freezer to make ice blocks. And that's how I, that's how I help my, my grandmother still pay for my school fees and, and take me to school. And, and my aunt one day just tells me, you have to stop these ice block things in my freezer. You, my 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 food in the freezer is beginning to smell like your ice blocks, so you have to stop. <laughs> yeah, like that means I have to stop school because, like, if if I stop this, this is how I then I have to stop school, you know. Uh, so that day I I didn't go to school. I just took a walk from Lilanda to Matero to my granny's place, and I told her, and she said, "Look." Um, I don't know how it's going to work out, you staying there and then you making the ice blocks from here, but my little fridge can still do the job, you know? So I figured out how it would work. Um, Maybe two to three times a week, I would go to my granny's place very early, make the ice blocks, put them in the fridge. Then I got some boy that would sell them for me while I was at school. And then after school, I would also be hustling, selling uh, back then videotapes and and uh, VCDs and stuff. And, and it sort of worked out. And then again, at some point in grade 11, the same aunt just tells me, hey, listen, I can't help you anymore. Um, she sat me down, in fact, just before I went to school one day and said, you have become a burden to my family. Damn. You know, that's the first time I actually looked up the word burden in in a dictionary. (laughs) (laughs) It's a heavy word, man. No, it's it's not as pretty as it sounds at all. And I was just like, damn, man, you know what it means to become a burden on some on somebody. And this is your aunt. This is your mother. It's not like you wished for your mom to die. You don't even understand this shit. And why people have to die but hey it is what it is and again not to make a plan so there's just been like all these things that's been happening but i just keep going I, i've never been one one kid even when i was young to complain much and i'm so grateful for that i just sort of just move on i'm that guy i just fucking move you know and somehow things always just evolve to something else and something else and uh, that's how i ended up at that point, because now I needed more money to move into a place uh, of my own. That's how I ended up meeting a guy at town center called Andrew. So it, it, my whole story, right, is just about relationships. It's about people that helped me and people that helped me and people that looked out for me and people that fucked me up and people that there's, there's just people everywhere, you know. So there was a guy called Andrew. He had a shop at town center. He used to sell um Video tapes and VCDs were just coming in then and rarely DVDs because not many people are DVDs. So we're talking about, uh, was that like 2000, you know? Um, so he was like, look, youngster, I, I asked him for a job. He said, look, I could be giving you tapes and whatever I sell to sell. I give you at a certain price, you put a markup. You make your money, you give me mine, and we carry on. So that's how I got into that hustle, you know. And then um, some uncle of mine from Livingston, 
decided he wanted to help with my last grade, uh, that's grade 12. So I moved to Livingston to finish my grade 12. And um, as soon as my grade 12 was done, I, I came back to the hustle, back to the streets. And I've just been hustling and I've never looked back. And there were ups and downs, this and that. But yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck on a mature woman who's your blood calling you a burden and, you know, killing your a business that's, you know, your upkeep. You're paying your school fees, you're transporting yourself to school using those ice blocks that you were selling to friends in the neighborhood and stuff. I'm trying to imagine what the relationship is like or if she's still alive, what the relationship is oh. like. If she's not, what the relationship was like when you became a millionaire and the tables turned. Yeah, the tables turned. We were not talking much, but I'll fast forward it to right now. Yeah. You won't believe this, man. I'm not as gangster as I think I am, man. I'm such a soft. <laughs> yeah. I love that woman, bro. You've got no idea. I love that woman, man. She's like one of the three. There's only three of my aunties that have ever visited me in my beautiful house in Santon, and she's one Tam of them. Chile. Fact, Tam yeah. Chile. Tamshel, Tamshel Estate, yeah, we pronounce it as Tamshel Estate. She yeah. visited me, she stayed here for a month, you know, my daughter loves her, and I just told her, I, I just told her the truth about how she hurt me and how, you know, I was really broken hearing those words from her as a mother, and how difficult my life got afterwards. But I also thanked her for doing that, because I feel she also contributed to how tough I became. Not that you wish for this shit to happen, but if anybody ever casts you into the dark, the day you figure out your light within the dark, you love those people. That's what happened. I love Trevor, that woman. Yeah. Do, do you feel, I'm sorry to cut you off. Do you feel, um, I'm, I'm assuming when you, when she came to visit you and she was staying in this beautiful house, and you told her how you felt, her response was a lot different because you have in what most people would call it made it. Do you feel poverty makes people um, become so inconsiderate, become so mean, become assholes because they are all competing for the same resources? Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? That that's not who she was, but because there was like limited resources, then in this instance, fuck Trevor, I need to cut down yeah, the resources that I have. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and I'm leaning more towards that. That's not true. Um, so instead of talking about poverty, I'll talk about money. Because that's what I understand better now. Um, Money and pain are very similar. Allow me to be a bit poetic here. Okay, money and pain are very similar. They actually don't do anything to you. They just expose who you are. They bring out the real you. So whether people have got money or they don't have it, if they are bad people, that's who they are. Mm -hmm. Certain circumstances just amplify that. Mm -hmm. You know, because my aunt is still not doing well. Okay. As a matter of fact, she's not doing well, but she's just a way better person now. And I don't think it's about me. It's about her. She's grown. And, and when we had this conversation, she just said it. I was young too. Maybe there is a way I perceived life. I didn't understand so many things. And over time I've learned that, you know what? I may have hurt you in, in, in different ways in the things that I said, and I really hate you and I'm sorry. Um, and, and I believed her because I've seen her. You know, the thing is you can see and feel people being sincere. You know, she, she is very sincere, you know? Um, so I think she's, she's um, I look at my aunt and I think she's, she's lucky that she's grown into the person that she is now because she, 
she understood she had a chance to realize what she did wrong to people like me and she she apologized for it and i forgave her and we are at peace now and she knows if there is one woman i think in my family that i've given more money to it's her she just knows i hate to see her suffer so if she doesn't have anything sunny i need this an e wallet whatever you know and and genuinely so our connection is just that genuine um i don't know what may have inspired her to behave the way she did when i was younger but right now honestly she's a better person and and i love her for that can we can we talk about what you're into nowadays man like um we we've been seeing Trevor with cows we've seen Trevor with trucks we've seen Trevor in a suit in a marketing office what what, what are you, what are you into now man what's keeping you in that millionaire bracket still yeah so my my core business is still marketing yeah so my marketing company actually gave me everything that i have um everything it built me my whole empire you know so it's the one business i wake up to uh go to every morning every morning i'm at my marketing business you know and i'm in the office very early you know very early you know so that's my core business I, i'm still doing that i've got a good number of clients there um some of the clients on my list include vodacom uh, rsa web um i'm doing a lot of fundraising for international organizations such as four paws i'm still dealing with four paws they are the longest um running clients that i have on my books we've built such a great relationship uh we've grown together as two organizations um doing fundraising for breadline africa which is um a charity organization that invests in early childhood development in underprivileged communities so we help them raise money to build schools uh and then kitchens um you know play areas safe play areas for kids you know i i raise money for doctors without borders international that's still a big part of my life the marketing side so even when you see me on twitter talking a whole lot of shit i'm actually a very busy guy on that front you know it's it's actually <laughs> funny it's actually funny how i still do what i do because i i chill i chill and work the whole time and now I've I've gotten to that level where I really wear suits um which is what I always wanted. So my belief has always been no matter how much money I make if I can't live life on my own terms and I never made it. So to me my own terms is to wear whatever the fuck I want. So I show up at the office in shorts. I I've, I've got a good collection of nice expensive ripped jeans. I like my cool t-shirts. I've got nice good arms, you see. So I look good in there you know um and then I've got my logistics company that moves a lot of cargo between South Africa and Zambia mostly from South Africa into Zambia a bit of Botswana as well though we do get some things from Zambia into South Africa every now and again um that I think is one of my fastest growing companies I'm actually predicting that in the next 5 years it will be bigger than my marketing company uh then i do ranching so that's cows and pigs uh that's in chinji in malawi just about 12 k's across the border when you cross into malawi from zambia um that's where i i do my cows and my pigs um i've got a, a sports company which is still building it's a very expensive venture to go into requires a lot of patience um but i'm 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 grateful for that so that one is being run by upalo who have given a a share holding in uh yeah. upalo siwale in zambia um then um what else oh i've got uh, the record label which is based in south africa uh that i've given a share holding to to Reggie in uh Reggie is the guy young vapor that used to be in Zone Farm um, yeah yeah so he runs our record label uh from Pretoria um but head head office at my office in Santon um 
And then I've got Kilogram, which is my fashion brand that I've, I've, I'm building with my wife. It's very close to our hearts. Um, again, it's just a story of pain and love. Um, I don't know if I told you the meaning of Kilogram and what inspired that. Uh, would I be right to assume it comes from your daughter, KG? Partly. Partly, okay. So before before we conceived KG, um, my wife is and that, I were... Is expecting, that the logo? Yeah, that's the logo. My wife and I were expecting uh, a son, you know? Um, <laughs> so about three months into the pregnancy already, our doctor told us, um, that my wife was going to have complications with her pregnancy because she, she's hypertensive. We didn't know that until she fell pregnant. So the issue there was that there wasn't enough blood flow to the baby, you know, to the fetus um, at any given time. So they put her on these meds on a certain diet to just try and help the baby grow um, with wh whatever they call it, you know. So the goal that the doctors gave us or that we all had was to get the baby to weigh at least one kg by six months of the wife's pregnancy. Because at one kilogram, then you have a higher chance of premature birth and the baby surviving. So that was the goal. Unfortunately for us, at six months exactly, we lost the child. You know? Yeah, yeah so that again was another story you know another painful part of my life and the wife but we we were together we were there through it you know it i think it brought us closer you know um and we tried again and that's how kg was born so when it was time for me now to build my fashion brand and i was brainstorming on the names and then kilogram just hit me hard i was like wait 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 I was trying to have a child and our goal was to get to a kilogram to save that <laughs> baby. And I had a daughter and I named her Kotsatsana, which means princess. And her initials are KG because it's so hard for most people to pronounce her name. So we just call her KG. And I was like, that's a double meaning. A KG double entendre. For, yeah, yeah, a KG for the, for the son that we lost and the yeah. kg for the daughter that we have so kilogram is our story of pain and love and how pain and love are two faces of the same coin so yeah. that's how kilogram came to be you know so it's a, it's a very special business inspired by a very special part of our life so that's one business uh then there is the radio station now um, that i'm building I'm excited about it because I love music. I think even through all these situations that I've explained, just part of the stories, one thing that kept me going is just music. You know, music saved my yeah. life. I just yeah. believe that, you know? So what we are doing with Robert Radio is very simple. Lifestyle and entertainment. They will ne you will never hear news on my station. I'm not interested. I hate we, bad we, vibes. We have enough news on Twitter and Facebook, yeah. right? If you want news, switch off, go somewhere, listen to news, and then come back. We make you happy again after that. Because we know the news. Dude, where's your radio station? Yeah, yeah where's your radio station? Okay. It's online. But where's it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool. It's being, it's being hosted in the UK. Oh, dope. Dope. So the, the radio station is you, being hosted you in the UK. You call us dropouts are taking over, huh? You call us dropouts are taking over, huh? <laughs> Look, I think part of and, and look, right? I don't I don't shit on people that are educated, but I also understand why when people like us drop out, get a chance, why we go as hard as we do, because we are so uncomfortable with the fact that we don't have any qualifications that can get us jobs or that can. And we don't have, we don't have a plan B. There's no plan we, B. There's no plan B. So this is it. This shit has to work. Yeah. <laughs> this this gotta work. You know what I'm saying? And also because we know that we don't know, we are always learning. And I think that's where a big part of our growth comes from. I think sometimes I've seen it with some of our more educated friends. It's like knowing that they've got this qualification. It's like they've arrived, you know, but that's not the way life is. You always have to Word. keep pushing yourself. You Word. always have to keep growing and challenging yourself. And that's something that a guy like me always does. 
Trevor, I need to ask this with all of your success, and I know a large part of, or maybe even 100% of your success is coming from the the hardships you've been through, the, you know, the arm throwing out your ice blocks, uh, you losing your grandma. Uh, there's a lot of hardships that, that have pushed you to where you are today. And then let's look at your life in the next... Oh, let's let's talk about KG's life in the next twenty years. Twenty five years from twenty years from now, she's like what twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, twenty she's years from now, where... she's yeah. So if we fast forward to then, we're looking at her from this perspective. She's lived a life where her life has been soft. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you hope to make her? as successful as you in business and to keep your legacy going. And by that, I mean, your business is going. I, I actually don't, I don't think I want to push her to become successful at any of the things that I'm doing. It would be great if she fell in love with any one of my businesses or all of them, because man, like yeah. what better legacy? Um, but man, I would love for this girl to just go and do whatever the fuck she wants, man. So everything that I do right now is to make sure that I soften her landing as much as possible. If she decides to go and do music one day and she's not even the greatest musician in the world, I still want her to be one of the richest. (laughs) Yeah. But I want her to be happy. I was talking to a friend earlier today, Coin, and we're discussing uh, a, a, a similar thing. We had a similar discussion earlier today. And we're talking about, you know what, Let, let's work so hard that our children have a choice of what they want to do with their lives. We didn't have a choice because, well. No, exactly. Yeah. And, and look. Our parents didn't um, give us much I, in terms of what to go with. Yeah. W- when we were on the call earlier, we were joking, right, where I'm telling you that, man, we used to watch Vinyao at school. You know, and my daughter, and my yeah. daughter is doing ballet. You know, um, <laughs> it's it's summer now. It's it's very hot. My daughter's got a swimming pool outside, bro. I grew up in Matero, man. Swimming pools were like things we saw on TV and in magazines, and when we visited, you somewhere. swam in streams. Get to the point, bro. I never swam at all. Which streams do you know in Matero? You don't know Matero well. No, I don't know Matero. I know I swam in streams. Matero, well. there Mat- streams yeah, there. where I live, yeah. there was no water bodies. So most kids around where I grew up just never learned how to swim. But for her, those are the things that she's exposed to. Uh, you know what I'm saying? She goes to school. They do music at school. Like the world that she's growing up in is, is very different. Look, this kid was born at Life Hospital. That's one of the best private hospitals in South Africa. It's just like two case, two kilometers from where we live. Yeah. She's growing up in a, in a gated estate. At the age of three, she wakes up. It's hot now. They're on break at school. And she's telling me, Daddy, when are we going to the beach? I went to the beach for the first time in my 20s. <laughs> so already what I'm exposing my kids to, by the time she'll be in her 20s, her life will be very different. So my yeah. challenge now, right? And again, like what we were talking about earlier, Elson, as you get older and you make more money, part of the reason why you don't talk about your money that much is because now it's there already, man. And your yeah. goals change. Yeah. Like now when I talk about money or when I think about money, I'm looking at it in terms of, if I die in the next five years, what does my estate look like? You know, in the next five years, my daughter will only be mm-hmm. eight years old. Will I leave enough money in all my different investments, offshore, land, livestock, in my businesses, cash, you know, to sustain my daughter for as long as possible? She'll obviously go and make her own money someday. But as a dad, that's my job to make sure that my kid is sorted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You remember when we started when we started the um, uh, the podcast? You mentioned that uh, your biggest drive was was poverty. It's a big part of why you left Zambia, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's the same that's the same story with 
pretty much almost every successful person that I know is they already know what poverty feels like. So that is what motivates you. Part of what I thought Kalenga was 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 alluding to is you've worked so hard, now your daughter does not know what it is like to grow up the way that you did. Which could mean one of two things. It takes away, possibly, that as a drive for her to work. Do you get what I mean? So how do you create a balance where, number one, you want her to have the life you did not have growing up, but number two, for her not to think that life is so easy um, for me to get the latest iPhone 14, all I have to do is ask my dad. Because when dad is no longer there, yeah, she will now realize this is a 40,000 rand phone. Do you get what I mean? So how do you how do you create that balance that listen, life is so, not easy. You see me driving so one Mercedes, of this, this thing was that, yeah. that expensive. So one of the things that I've come to learn, right, is one of the biggest lies for people like us that come from poverty is that people have to know poverty for them to, to be inspired to do better. They don't need to. Because then how do you explain Bill Gates? How do you explain Elon Musk? How do you explain Zuckerberg? Zuckerberg. They've never had to they know poverty. Rich, Fuck yeah. poverty. Fuck poverty. Like for real. You know what I'm saying? So that, that is us projecting fear because of where we come from. And I and, and that's just what I realized. Okay. Obviously, because my daughter is my child and I'm the first generation millionaire in my family, she will fucking know daddy's story and where daddy comes from. But if maybe that's all she ever needs to know about poverty, daddy was poor, he grew up poor and that's it. She never even has to, like that's it. But one of the things I'm, I'm raising her to do is to, to be kind, to know that there are people that are less privileged than her, you know? And I love this about her because already she understands the concept of sharing. My daughter likes to share. You know, she's the first person when she's sharing with somebody, with another kid, with a grown up, whatever. She's the first one to say, sharing is caring. I want her to grow up that way. Not that she has to experience poverty in any way, but she should know that there are people that don't have. And when you can, it's your job to help. And also that you shouldn't feel bad about your wealth. Okay, enjoy it. The fact that the next person doesn't have doesn't mean you don't deserve to be happy. It's yours. Enjoy it. Because that's also yeah. something that poverty does to us, right? We get to a point where we sort of start to feel guilty about what we have because other people don't have. Like, nah, that's, that, it shouldn't be like that. Okay? So I'm, I'm living not, apologetically. No, no, no. I'm not like, I, that's one thing about me. I'm not living apologetically. I never had this shit. Now I have it. Why do people have shit so they can enjoy it? So that's exactly what I'm going to fucking do. I'll enjoy my shit. I'm there to help people when they need it, but I don't feel bad. I'm not, not going to starve myself and not allow myself to spoil myself every now and again and buy a nice expensive watch just because, you know, it's like that Rick Ross line, you know, um, something about there's kids in Africa starving, but this watch is a hundred grand, nigga. So what do you want Rick Ross to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so when I wear one of my collector watches, I wear it with, I'm happy. I didn't steal this money. I worked hard for it. And I wanted to test this life. I'm here now. This is what we do. I'll continue to help other people. I'll continue to inspire other people. So that's also how I want my daughter to grow up understanding life. That listen, you have, okay? And tables can turn. This is why we never stop working hard. Okay, you don't ever want to experience that. Not because, not that the people that are experiencing poverty are stupid, but you've been blessed enough to be born in wealth. So what do we do now to make sure that you carry on living like this, but also using the privileges that you have to impact the world around you positively? So that's, that's the lesson I want my kid to learn. That's deep stuff, man. Uh, Elson, you got anything else? I want to talk entertainment now. Uh, no, I was just going through some of your photos. Um, I think I saw some pictures of, I don't know if that's your daughter or not, when you were in, in Harare, Rainbow Towers. 
Oh, Re oh, Rainbow Towers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I stay there every time I'm in Harare, so I don't know which year that was, which trip that was. I, I love that place, and it, it, it sort of makes me sad, too, because... Right, right, that one right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss KG, she was a year old. That's the first time I took her to Zambia. So we were on holiday. We spent some days in, in Harare because I wanted to show my wife around. Then we drove through Kariba, then Lusaka. Then we came back through Livingston, spent some days. So, yeah, man, that was Miss KG when, we, when she was a year old. How is the Zen? I, I, I've been seeing okay. from Twitter right, talk, talk, how talk. excited the Zambian community is with some of the greatest achievements today, man. How, how are you taking that, though? Bro, it's, um, it's brilliant, man. Um, yeah. it's, it's brilliant. That level of representation is, is what our country needed for so long. We've got so much talent. We've got so many great people. To have Sampa the Great and Sheffy and Tio Nesson um, on a soundtrack for a big movie like that just Marvel. make the whole world notice us man like what you guys are doing this podcast is international standard yeah you, you get it it is yeah. but opportunities like that just begin to put all of us on a different platform um get yeah. all of us a bit more respected plus it's just that pride man like this chick is one of us, man, and she's got real talent and she deserves to be there. You know, like, it's, it's just beautiful, man. It's great. And fuck anybody that doesn't like it. <laughs> I was laughing on a tweet. I just, I just wanted to have that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something you retweeted today. Um, I, I can't remember the, the account that tweeted this, but somebody said, yeah. uh, when the movie premieres, let's Zambians all over the world go to the cinema and curse in our local language. <laughs> yeah, you know, just be in the cinema. <laughs> hey, <Mafika -la!" laughs> you know? <laughs> I laughed at that, man. Like, yeah, no, for language, real. Wherever you are, Australia, America, wherever. <laughs> yeah, and when they, and when they ask when, what, what that word means, just tell them, say, it's just a celebration in my language. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, you mentioned how you went broke. What was the reason you went broke? What did you spend too much too fast? Was it the chicks? Because SA has got like some really big booty chicks, man. Mm. Mm? Yeah, uh, I, I had a girlfriend that I loved so much. So it wasn't really the chicks. It's just the lifestyle. I just upgraded my lifestyle a bit too fast. You understand? Right. And I was just so I, again, right? This answers, I think, the first. Is part of the answer to the first question that Kalenga asked about diversification. Yeah. So I was I was too excited mm -hmm. to just have money sitting in my bank account and I had no plan for it. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. So yeah, right. I just sometimes I would I would just go and just get a statement just to look at my money. You know what I say? Yeah, they get this is my shits. But that's not what money is for. That's not what money is for. So the next time I made money, part of the reason I said diversify, diversifying is because now I knew that money is supposed to work. The, the job of money is to make more money. Money is supposed to work. You understand? Yeah. It's supposed to work. So when I say I'm worth a million dollars, a lot of people think I just have a million sitting there. No, 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 no. Most of it is in different things now. You know, it's making other babies. That's what money is for. That way, if this one line of business fails, I've got something else to fall back on. And let me just answer. I just remember there's this I wanted to say right at the beginning. When do you know it's the right time to diversify? My answer to that is always when you can do your current business with your eyes closed. Then you know you are ready to do something else. Yeah. So yeah. up until a time when you know your business so well that they can just slap you <coughs> in your sleep, wake up, Kalenga, what is this? And you can explain it to detail and you can run it. Up until that time, you're not ready to diversify. Also, when you have money ready, some people diversify under pressure because other people are doing it. 
but are you ready? Do you have the resources? Are you mentally ready for the challenges that come with building every business? Because there's that aspect too. Sometimes you have the money, but you're not ready mentally because it's exhausting to build businesses. It's like building a house. It's like anything. It's exhausting. You know, so I lost money, uh, Elson, because I had no idea what to fucking do with it, to be honest. As a result, I was just playing with it. I was just blowing it. And I was putting it into things that were not bringing money back. Trevor. So when, I, you, when you decide to diversify, right, yeah, how, do you, yeah. how do you figure out? Um, because I, uh, in, in a lot of what you're saying, I see myself in a lot of what you're saying, right? How do you figure out what you are going to get into? Um, I have tried to not get into something that I know nothing about. Uh, and I don't know if that limits me. Yeah. Um, to just basically what the fuck I know. Um, so it's always been anything related to IT, software development, fintech. And that is what I've sort of just put blinders and say, if I'm going to do anything, it has to be in the realm of what the fuck I know. But you've mentioned everything from marketing to, to clothing cattle. to logistics and cattle. How do you how do you figure or how do you realize that, you know what, I could actually sell toothpicks and they work? Yeah, so another thing, right, is in your, in your situation, Elson, there's no, don't feel pressured to diversify if you don't have an idea that you want to diversify into because that's also the danger of, of, of doing business in a wrong way where you end up losing money it's because you just thought you needed to diversify, but maybe there's no need to. Maybe you just need to keep growing your current business. Sometimes that's, that's what it is. There's different dynamics in business. So sometimes your business grows, like my marketing business, right? I run it in a certain way that there's a level that I don't want it to go past for a reason. This business is so personal to me. Um, if it went past a certain stage, I'll probably start to choke at my own success because I'll need so many people to help me run so many parts of my business that it will just become too complicated. So then I start to take that money and now I start to do other things that I've always loved, that I've always thought of. So for example, one of my goals, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull this off in the next two years. I want to retire fixing cars. I, I just want to become a mechanic. It's like, mm. yeah, as crazy as it seems, okay? Insane. Yeah, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I just want to customize cars. I want to buy wrecks and build them, and I want to buy different cars and customize them, and I want to fix cars for other people. And I want to do that until, I don't know, whenever, right? But I love it. It's a big part of me. If you look at the kind of cars that I have, and you know, like if you check the way my cars look, you can tell, man, my test in cars comes from a certain place. You understand? I love yeah. that. I love that. And I would like to help people that say, hey, Trev, I've got 100K I want to put in my car. What do I do with it? Because there are people that want their cars to look nice, but they don't know what to do with it. You know, I want to help them in that regard. But then... There are businesses like what you do. If you don't have anything else to diversify into, maybe just keep focusing on growing your business and see how far it goes. Just put all your energy in there and it's okay. And the beauty with technology businesses, right, is that they can be, they can be so many different things within themselves. So you're talking about IT. IT is broad. So as long as you understand the whole industry, right, what, what you can be selling hardware, you can be building software, you can be consulting for other businesses within that space. You can be, you understand what I'm saying? So within yeah. that one business, you can have so many different divisions and just hire the right people to manage them. And that's it. You just built a whole technology company without you having to diversify into different industries. And also what I've learned, right, and something that a lot of us need to understand is, you know how some people can play football, but you can see they have to work extra hard to do that. And then there are some people that are just naturally Ronaldo? good at it. Yeah. So Messi. for me, I look, at, I, I look at Ronaldo and Messi. I'm not big on football, but from what I've seen about the two, right, is Messi's talent is 
godly. Cristiano Ronaldo is a yes, hustler. it's effortless. That is so true. Cristiano, Cristiano works Ronaldo, for it. he has to work for Cristiano, that. Cristiano, uh huh. That's that's my point. And they are both great at it. So even in business, right? I I I'm a messy. I do shit that people go like, "How the fuck did you do that?" I'm great at it, and I've realized that, and I'm just maximizing on that opportunity. So what are you really good at? And what can you maximize on? Where are you spending most of your time building, building your business or whatever you want to do? Gems, mm. mm. man. I like that. Trevor, I, I, I drop, I drop gems for fun. Call me Solomon. Wisdom chasing me around. <laughs> I'm like a Pokemon. They say money talks. Let me explain. Bullshit walks. I feel your pain. You know I rap sometimes, yeah? That, that's another talent maybe you should invest in when you retire. Yeah, I've got a song no, out. I think, I think Robert, Robert Cattell Music are planning to release it before end of the year. I've done a single. Serious? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. More to talk yeah. about when we have a part two. Um, yeah. I think on my end, that's it. I'm, I'm done with what I wanted to find out from you. Unless Elson has anything else. No, I'm good. Um, I mean, this is the second time that I've, I've spoken to you. Uh, we were on the phone, um, I think, a month back with, um, with, with Vatis. And this is the second time that we've spoken to you. And um, yeah, I've, I've, I've enjoyed uh, learning a lot more from you. One thing that I, that I get out of the conversation that I've had with you, which is, which is kind of different, to what I normally get when I speak to people who have made it is, well, I, I sort of understand where they're coming from. You know, one of the 48 laws of power is make your achievement seem so effortless. You see people um, rush through, oh yeah, um, I then went and I spoke uh, in front of parliament and I pitched this amazing idea and I'm, and I'm sitting there like, just hold the fuck on, dude. How does the average person from fucking Matero get into parliament? So you've already skipped quite a lot uh, to yeah. the point where you're telling us how you got to parliament or I went to the bank and then I spoke to, I don't know, the CFO. Like, dude, you are speaking like half the people that are listening to you have got no idea how to even get to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I actually, I actually like a, sort of a blow by blow of how things sort of came together for you. And it wasn't just a matter of, oh, I went to SA and then from there, I spoke to the CEO of Virgin and then I got this deal. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it has to make sense, man. It has to make yeah, sense. Yeah. And I feel this is where a lot of youngsters especially don't know what they should do because the success stories that are out there are very hard to relate with. So it's yeah. like, okay, you are that rich guy and right. then I'm this poor kid. What connects us? How do I, How do I get from here? How do I bridge that gap? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, but... Right. You know? Trevor, it's been real talking to you. I know yeah, you, no, you kept no, I get that. So, yeah, um, way past your bedtime, yeah. Yeah, guys, look, thank you so much. Um, I'll never pass on the opportunity to, to share, um, especially like the conversation we've had today. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that even after all the things I've gone through, I'm still vulnerable, man, and I like that because I'm still human. I haven't cried in a long time. Funny enough, Absolutely. this is the second time that Kalenga seen me cry. The first time we yeah. met... I yeah. shared this story with him about my grandmother. And again, yeah. like, you know, um, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, Sorry, I don't pray. <laughs> I don't pray, but I, I like the, We made her cry. Yeah, I like the, you know, John 11, yeah. 35. Yeah. John 11, 35, the shortest, the shortest Jesus verse in wept. the Bible happens to be to the strongest wept. one to me too. Yeah, Jesus wept. Do you know why I like that verse? Hey, break it down, bro. What's up? Because you because wept a lot? It makes it, it makes it okay for even the strongest people in society to be vulnerable. 
Yeah. We are only human, guys. They, and we need to have more of these conversations this as group. men for our mental health, man. We're not having these conversations yeah. enough. There's this amazing, um, is it Michael Jordan? I'm sure you've said it, and it's been turned into a meme. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> of him crying. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You've seen that shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Trevor, we have to yeah. let you go, bro. Yeah, Get your rest. I know you have to be in the office at four. Elson, Trevor is the most amazing human being when it comes to time. I would call him at 4.30 and he would already be in the office any day. Any day, four thirty. I don't like where office. this is going. I don't like. Where, I don't. I don't like where this is going. I feel attached. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, Trevor, guys, thank time. you so much for having me. Much appreciated. Yeah. Have a good one. Cheers. All right, cheers. All right, brother. Bye. Thanks for coming too. Take All care. Right. Cheers. Bye. Damn. Dude. Jesus Christ. Dude, what a guy. What an amazing guy. guy. And you know, he's the kind of guy if there's, there's, there's so much we've left on the table, but you know, we have to be mindful of time as well. Because this guy has got stories for not days, years. Mm. Many, many years. Yeah. Anywho, dude, I think uh, I saw a couple of pictures with him and Somizi there, and Somizi was looking really, really cozy. <laughs> No, I didn't say shit. I just saw. I said I saw a couple of pictures. I don't know what the fuck you want me to say. <laughs> that that's me calling Sango on the other side. Sango, my bro. Can you unmute your mic there? You're still muted. Technology getting the best of me. Uh-huh. Aha! Now, now there we can you go, Sango. There you go. How loud, are you? And, loud and clear. Now it looks like the internet is failing you. Yeah. Are you in the kitchen? You okay, though? Yes, I am. I'm in the kitchen. I'm okay. I'm okay. So are you, are you in the kitchen for better network or are you cooking something for the family? Better network, actually. And good <laughs> lighting. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bruh, the Quacha yeah, yeah. Awards, man. Yo. Yo. What would you like to know? That's like a whole thing. That's a whole thing. I had a, I had a couple of people call me about those awards. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, like why me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what do I have to do with your maps losing? Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you people just leave us out of this? <laughs> I was driving from Kitwe. They, they respect and... your opinion, Elson. <laughs> they respect his opinion. Yeah, you're driving yeah, from must Kitwe. Be his honesty, guy. He... Yeah, so sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh... I, I was saying I was, I was driving from Kitwe, and my phone kept buzzing. I think I had to park like four or five times just to hear these lengthy conversations about the disciplinary committee and. Uh, we made your maps lose, but I was like, guys, I don't think any fingers should be pointed at anyone here. Whatever's happened, happened. And uh, Sanga, yesterday we were laughing about how I only knew about Chile One last week, and you won't believe who introduced me to Chile One my mom. Mm -hmm. And after I listened to his music, I understood why this guy is trending with the older ladies because most of his songs are mostly kitchen party wedding songs, kind of you know what I mean. And I mean that in a good way, exactly. I, 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 I like exactly. His music. I only heard his music for the first time last week, I'll be honest. You don't want to offend anyone there by saying, I mean that in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> his music relates to the average Zambian. That's how he produces it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Sanga, what stood out for you at the awards? I know the Kaira family, for you, that stood out, being a hip-hop fan. But what, mm -hmm. what, what were the highlights for you? The highlights for me have to be, of course, Chile won winning. Uh, Sheffy getting two awards, even though there's no new music out. The last track he had was Husband Material and the Quacha song with Jazzy Boy. 
So him winning those two awards, one uh, best male, I believe, and the other one for husband material being like the best hip hop rap song. Uh, that tells you a lot about his fan base and how much of a cult following they are, you know, compared to, to oh, obviously, yeah. That's a chiller one there. You know, speaking of Chef 187, I, I, uh, I had a meeting with the PR company that's... Uh, the, comp the, the, PR, the, 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 the company that's handling PR for Yango, Yango Taxis. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get us a deal, Elson, and they were talking about the kind of individuals they're dealing with as Yango. They, they're looking at, of course, the numbers, and also interaction, interactivity with fans. And it just mm -hmm. so happens, Chef is Zambia's most interactive celebrity. So that could also explain why, when it comes to an event like the Quad Show Awards that require fans to vote, people are going to turn out in numbers for Chef because they really feel a part of him. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. they showed me his Facebook account, his uh, Instagram. Mm. Chef responds to almost everyone. That comment oh, his management, his management gets to work. They yeah, to whoever work is doing that, they're doing yeah. a good job for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. Over well, time, maybe he's just, not, maybe just not busy. Or maybe he's <laughs> not busy. <laughs> <laughs> see? See why people want to call on you, Elson. This is why people want to call on you. Those no, 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 I'm just, no, no, I'm just, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm just being honest. The guy would have a lot of time on his hands, fam. Like, you know, like right? Jajati. Uh, yeah. Who's the other guy? The, Simon. What's the, the lawyer guy that we had? Oh, Simon Malay. <laughs> he spent yeah. a lot of his time on Facebook. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I don't, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Some but your, I, your yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. A lot, a lot, a lot of, I, know, I saw a post that. from a guy that I yeah. know, a uh, pretty close, close friend of mine, uh, Kabila Leka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so Kab I don't know why there's a delay. In Kabila Leka was saying, um, Yo Maps is a lot bigger than um, the Quacha Music Awards. Uh, well, firstly, what, what do you what, do? You agree with that? What do you, What do you think? What do you think about that? Before I put I in my two cents. I don't agree with that. He is in that viral stage where everything he touches becomes a hit. But I don't think his fan base has gotten to cult following status. He doesn't have that kind of fan base Sheffy has right now that will vote for him regardless of what he does or what he said. You know, Sheffy has that loyal fan base that your maps right now just doesn't have yet. So to say he's bigger than the Quachas, I don't think people would use the Quacha Awards to punish him if he was actually bigger than those things. I'm just saying. And really, apart... <clears throat> And and really, um, co correct me if I'm wrong, um, Kalenga. You might know a bit more about this, but all the Kwacha Music Awards does is it gives a platform uh, for people to go in and vote, right? So they put in five people against each other, and all they do is they then tell people go out and vote. So essentially, what this means is that this is a reflection of what the fans or the people that are voting think of you. Yeah, exactly. And so this is not really about they themselves, the Quarter Music Awards. It's just a platform that they have created to get people to go in and vote. It's different to the Billboard Awards where it is based off the number of spins or the, num uh, or the duration of the time that you were uh, on the charts. It's different to the Grammys where other musicians or um, some people in the music industry um, vote. This is just basically of people going out to vote. So it's a reflection of what the fans actually think. 
This is actually really yeah, similar fact, to yeah, the, the e People's Choice Awards. You are actually right, Elson. This is actually similar to the e People's right. Choice Awards because it's the people's choice, really. You know, your maps had that thing with you guys earlier on mm-hmm. that had him and his wife actually talk to people in a way that the fans really didn't like. There's a tone that they used in those videos they posted during that week that made fans feel like, oh, Bareto Pontela, oh, they feel like they've made it now. We'll show them. You know, the wife keeps saying I'm married to Zambia's biggest musician. You know, when you don't exhibit a certain level of humility in Zambia, fans will throw stones. And because fans don't have that many outlets, the minute something like the Kwacha Awards comes up, they will use that to whip you. Case in point, slap D and the Afrima Awards. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing happened to your maps. It's a PR issue. And I feel Kandeke doesn't help Limo with how he responds. My comment section. So it's a PR issue and how you ought to know where you are and what kind of fan base Zambia is. So if you don't really read the room, you get such things. I'm not saying he deserved what came to him, but you really need to know your Zambian people. Yeah, true, man. And also, I don't know. I'm Chile not really has hits, award. though. <laughs> he has what? Chile has hits, though. It's not like this is just some guy, the Zambian people picked on to say, we'll make this guy win over your maps. Chile actually has good songs out that are viral nationwide. I could name three of them. Yeah, I know. I'd actually uh, never heard of, I'd actually never heard of Chile one. Dude, I've never. Up until this whole scandal started. Have we been hiding under a rock or what? I had <laughs> never heard of Chile one until my mom spoke about him last week. Like, I couldn't tell you one song from this dude. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what, you know what I think. Uh-huh. It it feels yeah. like it it feels like just like when you brought up Slep D. You remember when um Slep D was going up against Casper, Neves? Yeah, it yes. got to a point where Casper trended so much he tweeted, "Why the fuck am I trending in Zambia?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. So it's not exactly. like people liked Casper, right? But they just didn't like this other guy more. Mm-hmm. So I don't and know if used, I don't know if people yeah. actually really like Chile One, but it felt like they just didn't like your maps more. <laughs> to me, <laughs> I feel like they do, but in the moment they also don't like your maps' attitude more. So they will use this other new dude who has come on the scene with a certain kind of humility to show the, the other guy. That's the outlet. Yeah. That's the only difference with Casper and Slap, I believe. Because, hey, man, then... uh, this Chile one, like the, the picture that I just showed, this guy, yeah. he literally was collecting awards like STIs. Like, Jesus, <laughs> what a night that was for him, right? Just have five been, of them, yeah. Have you been collecting STIs that fast, Delson? Like, why would, why would you use that analogy? No, no. Um, I don't know because it's the easiest thing burn. to pick up, I guess. It's 22 hours. Huh. Interesting. And then oh, Sean oh, really? Tembo has. Is it, Sanga, is Sean your relative? I mean, you're, you're, you're both Tembos. <laughs> it's so weird the number of people that <laughs> just Tembo. come on my Facebook <laughs> to say, yo, I see your name sometimes and my mind goes to Sean Tembo. I'll never understand <laughs> that. But we are not related. <laughs> The funny thing is, and then he... John Tembo made a post about your map saying, that guy. That my guy's brother. extremely funny. <laughs> <laughs> so he's one and then he's, uh, he's, he's put up a one-man protest about why should you recognize the president at an entertainment award? If that's the case, create a category where you're going to uh, vote for, what, leader of the year or something? So that you can also be recognized or something like that? You, you saw that, right? I only saw the one where he posted Chile one, uh, your maps. 
Yeah, I saw this one. And I, I didn't uh -huh. get it at first, but then I yeah. remembered how the election treated him, like treated Sean Dembo with the zeros and yeah. everything. So I was like, oh, yeah. I get the joke now. Yeah. Nah, there's a whole issue of uh, the CEO of the Quacha Music Awards, Kabu Sue, um, mm -hmm. recognizing the president firstly with how he won uh, the elections with the landslide victory and how much mm -hmm. work he has put into changing the face of the country. And it was quite mm -hmm. a, bit, it was a bit of a long speech. I was actually watching it again today. And Sean Tembo uh, puts up a post saying, look, why bring up politics into an entertainment or musical awards? Stop recognizing the president at such an event. Why do that? If you're going to do that, create a category where politicians can be recognized as well and the people will vote for who they feel is a good leader in this country. And let's see if HH is going to win that. You know what I mean? But I mean, then again, this is social media. You well, maybe that, they, that, we that, already so have that. We already have that it's, in the elections, right? We already have that. It's called the elections. Yeah, exactly my point. <laughs> yeah, we do. But you, you also yeah. have to understand that with most events in Zambia, people want that guest of honor feel. You know, you yeah. recognize the president. All of a sudden, your event has clout. The Diamond TV Awards just... When was that when they recognized... Uh, President Ed Galungu in the fashion category next to Bobby East. You remember that? When he wore the red suit, yeah? I think so. And Sean Tembo himself. Who wore the red the suit? Ed, Ed Galungu wore the red suit Ed Galungu, with red shoes. Yeah. But he looked, he looked exactly. dope. He really looked cool. He was recognized well, by the that. Diamond TV Awards. You know, yeah. Sean Tembo and the wife just attended the Diamond TV Awards. So. I feel like sometimes he sees such opportunities and wants to just take the political route all the time. Speaking of Diamond TV Amber Awards, TV. I was called today to present the most influential social media personality. And okay. I've already seen debates on uh, Facebook about who should take the award. Should it be Mutale Mwanza? Should it be Muzukanji? Sanga, you, you, you're one person who follows the Zambian entertainment industry very closely. Who do you feel mm -hmm. should take this one, man? Most influential social media personality. Your most influential social media personality right now. Yeah. I feel like Mwezo Kanji. Uh, Mtale Mwanza is really strong. Yeah. And uh, she has this shock value thing about her. She, she comes and goes. But Mwezo Kanji has this strong fan base, I feel. The cadres. Like people, yeah, people no, not only the <laughs> that's what she calls them. Yeah, that's what they call themselves oh, on a page. Yeah. Yeah. Those are loyal. Those are loyal. I feel like Muzukanji takes it. Muzukanji okay. takes it. This yeah. year. This yeah. year. We'll see. We'll see. I saw I saw a post. I saw a post that was made. Um that was made by uh, Alice Rowland uh, mm -hmm. on Kanji. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. How she inspires her and yeah, how she's yeah. come from nowhere and just become this very influential mm -hmm. person, turning her tragedy into triumph and stuff. Yeah, it was quite quite interesting. Yeah, Muzu yeah, uh, and post post the um, the the podcast that we've had, uh, we've actually been talking quite a lot. She's actually a very cool and reserved person she yeah. has a story to tell people relate to her yeah um it's it's, it's uh the way brands that have a good story behind them sell more i think yeah like if you anyway let me let me not, let me not delve too much into american stories here but when you have a story that a lot of people can relate to or find inspiration from, I think you're going to sell easily. I think Muzukanji fits that bill quite perfectly. So I think uh -huh. she's the person of the moment right now. Not that we're trying to, not that we're trying to preempt anything about the awards. This, I, feel, uh, I feel the same way. There was on Friday. Yeah. This week, right? Say again? Oh, uh, the awards. The Friday decided Saturday this week. What awards? Diamond TV. 
What are they called again, Sanga? Diamond TV Awards. Just that. Yeah, should be should be Friday this week. But all in all, the Quatra Music Awards were good. I think the only downside for me uh, was the sound for those watching at home on TV. I think the sound was a bit bad. Unless I was watching it off the wrong channel on uh, YouTube. But I didn't like the sound. I keep saying this, and people shoot me down for this, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think we are ready. We have great bands in Zambia, but I don't think we are ready when it comes to live music, the output, especially how it comes off when you're watching these things on TV. Not really good, not really good quality. So maybe we need to stick to the backtrack you know, yeah, maybe for clarity, backtrack, for clarity, the playback. Back, backtrack, the playback, assisting the drummers and the band, that would be cool. If the, yeah. the band could like have the playback as assistance, that would be cool. Otherwise, yeah, you have that no, just perform live, perform live, and not all Zambian artists are really strong live performers. You really did see what happened. So, yeah, yeah. no. Maybe we need to hold on for now. <laughs> what the hell are you writing on the screen, Elson? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, it did. Hey, you <laughs> yeah. The other the other downside for me was Auntie Maureen not giving her speech because of the hey, who's, Auntie, who's Auntie Maureen? Who's Auntie Maureen? Uh, Ma Maureen Nilanda. She got her lifetime achievement award, but right. she couldn't say anything because there was this man who says he is the Zam president who just kept going on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh crap! And that's the guy who, yeah. uh, who came and said education is not really. Well, what did you say again? Something to the effect of using your talents is better than having education or something. Having like education, yeah, yeah. He basically disregarded education and uh, praised talent. He also said oh, something about the talent. I would love that. <laughs> Hmm? Kalega, My fellow college dropout. Ah. <laughs> no, no education, this one. I don't know. No, no, no. You, 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 misunder you misunderstand me. <coughs> uh, there's a difference between school and education. I'm I do people. not support. Listen, I don't know. I don't know, I do I don't know why you are. Excuse me. I do not support what that man said. Ooh, he hit me with the excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. I do not support what the Zam president said for one particular reason. Mm -hmm. Um, he said, "We can't, you know. It'd be nice if we could remember the exact words, though. Um, just because I didn't finish college doesn't mean I'm not educated. I continued my personal education, and I continued using my talents. Big difference there. Just because I dropped out doesn't mean I'm not educated. I still read a lot. I still learn a lot. So to say that education is useless or should come second fiddle to." Uh, talent. I think it's, talent. it's a wrong notion to push. Because talent without education of any like kind is just yeah going nowhere second, really man. fast. Yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be a second. Yeah. Same thing with anyway. talent without character. And that's why we are seeing all these things we are seeing now of disciplinary committee I, I, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so 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 that dude wouldn't shut up? He kept just going on and on? He kept going on and on and on. I think he had a point to prove with whoever was there as the guest of honor. I believe there was a minister or MP there. So, yeah. Maureen Lander must have been pissed off, eh? I didn't see that. She just do walked you, off. Do you feel there's, there's, there's one person in particular that he was trying to make reference to by by mentioning the whole education and talent thing possibly the guest of honor should have been the minister there i think he was trying to make the point of you know the government does not really support the arts in this country but he went about it in the wrong way because he also shot himself in the foot by saying something like i'm zam president yet i don't get paid for this 
almost like he wasn't happy to be there or to be Zam president. He was <laughs> he might he could have been drunk. I don't know, but you need to see that footage. Seems like people go to this shit drunk. Or oh, which which award show did um BFF Kalen go to drunk? Talent. Uh just the Diamond Awards last year. This this time last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because those things go on for too long. Yeah. yeah, it's been a year too long. No, thanks. Yeah, so. kind of like morning pee. Yeah, kind of like morning pee. It's just, it's just unnecessarily long. <laughs> Sangha Bro, it's been nice having you. Thanks a lot for your input. And uh, we hope to you know have you on more of these as we go, especially with your oh, knowledge cheers. of the Zambian music industry. Thanks a lot cheers. for coming through, bro. Cheers. No problem. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Cheers, buddy. Elson Sexington. That can you leave me the so fuck weird. alone? What, what? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's 22 hours. That, that, that's like his nickname. <laughs> yeah, it's his... Uh, and the man is calling out of the man Sexington. Like, so Jesus name? Christ. Nah. It, it, co it comes with a reputation. And that, that was in Moflira over the weekend. And everybody kept asking... I think I should have mentioned this earlier. They were not saying Elson. They were saying Sexington. <laughs> you're lying. You're lying. You're making this up now. You do say that shit earlier. You're a goddamn liar. Shut up. <laughs> Guys, it's been a great episode. Have a lovely day, lovely evening, whatever time you're watching this. Sangha, thanks a lot for coming through, bro. Cheers, all right. Cheers, cheers all. Good award show. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. All in all. All right. Cheers, buddy. <sighs> Kalenga. Yeah. Awesome episode again. Um, if there were any technical difficulties with this thing, can you believe we have, we've been at this for two hours, six minutes? Have you cut it? No, not yet. <laughs> All right, you not can yet. Cut it now. We'll try and edit. Yeah, we'll try and edit that shit. But yeah, this has been pretty interesting. Yeah, till the next one. Ba -ba -ba